Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 12 I can't believe it. of our STEM speaker series. And today, we have a very special guest. You may have seen her on campus, okay? And this is Dr. Hussein. Dr. Hussein, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today in this very okay. special event. Yep. Thank you for having me. No problem. It's our pleasure. Dr. Um, uh, first, I have to tell you, you know, um, what Mari has been wonderful in all the classes. She has. And is, is, is the, does she take after you? Is that where the sign is? Or is it the husband? Which, which is it? I want to start the controversy right yeah. now. We both like to take credit for it. But <laughs> she's definitely, uh, she's, she's very driven and motivated. That's so, great. That yeah. sounds That's like what both of you are, too. Can you yeah. tell us about your latest? I, Maria said something to me about a paper that was accepted. Can, <laughs> are yeah, you? Right. No. So, that? yeah. So, Can you tell us a little bit about that in layman's terms? The paper? Yeah. So, uh, I, was, I was recently involved in a DARPA project. Um, DARPA stands for uh, the defense, uh, it's a defense agency. Uh, research agency within uh, within the Department of Defense uh, in the United States, and and well, that it, actually DARPA was was projects from DARPA led to the internet. So the 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 uh, if you're familiar with that, it's like uh, DARPA internet, funded yeah, project which internet, ultimately right. came came about to internet. Anyways, so sort of that was a little bit of a sidebar that came to my mind. But uh -huh. DARPA was funding. Uh, projects to develop systems that are resilient to denial of service attacks on the mm. internet. Okay. And so uh, this was a project which had been going on for the last uh, about three, three, four years. And um, I am at USC, Information Sciences Institute, and we host a cybersecurity testbed, which is actually a national resource. And mm. what this lets you do is create mini internets. So, you know, a scaled down version of what the internet is and then put these new systems in it to evaluate how these systems would help protect uh, against mm -hmm. denial of service attacks. Sure. So, so uh, this, this latest paper which I wrote was about um, four, uh, four or five systems that we evaluated as part of uh, um, XD3, which was extreme defenses against uh, denial of service attacks to look at um, to see how these systems behave and their large attacks, how effective they are, uh, can they really do uh, all types of attacks, or what, you know what kind of attacks can they defend against, and just evaluate these systems. So it was it was uh, it's always tricky writing these papers because you have to burn the midnight oil because unless sure. you're at least for me unless I'm under pressure the words don't come out. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, I'm not the only one. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so, uh, so I guess it was, it became like a family project. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, I have to go write my paper. Sorry, I'm not going to hang out. <laughs> but uh -huh. so, so once it was done, everybody was happy. Sure, it takes, a, <coughs> excuse me, it takes the whole family, doesn't it? It does. And even more so now. Uh huh. Yeah, that's true. Yes, even more so now. Yeah. So can you kind of give us a professional history of how, how you kind of got to what you're doing now? Yeah, so I, um, uh, I got my uh, my PhD in computer science, and uh, uh, my my PhD was about. It turned out to be about cybersecurity, something which I didn't, which wasn't really a field when I started my PhD about mm -hmm. 20, 20 years ago. It wasn't as big of a field. So while I was doing my PhD, this was from two thousand to two thousand and five. Um, cybersecurity became came into the forefront, uh, and so. Uh, I thought, you know, I ended up being at the right place at the right time. My uh, denial of service attacks became, their presence on the internet became very big and they started having big financial impact, meaning they could bring down websites and then you could associate dollars lost, revenue lost with, with uh, these attacks and things like that. And so, um, so I've been in cybersecurity specifically looking at denial of service attacks over the last 20 years. Hmm. So I looked at it, I've measured them, I've developed tools uh, to, to, to measure every aspect of these attacks as well as characterize them. And then uh, over the last 15 years, we actually are running a testbed to create these environments for, 
for denial of service attacks. Right. That's really crazy. You know, um, my first computer class, I hate to admit this, but I had the cards that you fill in. Yes. You yes. know, little data cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you, you gave them to the professor and the, the really smart kids had really big stacks of cards. And the <laughs> actually, you know, the more simplified you were, the, that, was, that was my first computer, yeah. first computer class in 1978. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Things have changed quite a bit since then. They have. They, they're, so, I mean, you know, yeah. So you, your master's was in computer science. No, your doctorate was in computer science, correct? What, what did you go to school for? Your first, what was your bachelor's degree in? You know, my bachelor's degree was also computer science. Oh, I okay. just, uh, so when I, I started, I, um, I, my first introduction to computer science was actually in my in my eleventh grade. I didn't. I wanted to be an accountant before then, so I was I was all set to be an accountant till uh, till tenth grade. And then in eleventh grade, I had an option to drop a language and take two computer science courses, which uh -huh. I opted for because I was just trying to get away from the language as much as I could. And that's how I got into computer science, and I I, I loved it. It wasn't really. And so then I finished my 11th and 12th grade and uh, applied to engineering school. And computer science wasn't a top option then. In fact, mechanical engineering, industrial engineering were mm. uh, really sought after. Uh, but again, again, this happened to be in the right place at the right time. CS became very, very popular while I was in college. Uh, so this was 93 to 97. And, and you were taking computer science at that time, even though it undergrad. wasn't popular. Yes, I, and it became by the time I graduated. That's perfect. So your timing it was exceptional. Was, was good because I think that a, a big problem as I was graduating was uh, the Y2K. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I graduated in 97 yeah. and Y2K was a big problem. So sure. if you were a computer graduate, you you found a job easily. Like there was no, uh -huh. I mean, you know, they wanted you by the by the dozen, right? So mm -hmm. um it, it sort of uh, was a good time to graduate. There was a lot of job opportunities when I graduated. And that was kind of, that was like right around the time the internet companies all exploded too. Like just, yes. yeah. Yeah. And yes, more right around 2002, 2003, while I was doing actually my, my PhD, a lot of my, my, uh, uh, my batchmates, like people who were doing the PhD with me, were dropping out. They were getting BMWs as sign-on bonuses <laughs> yeah. to, oh, yeah. to just join all the Googles and the Yahoos at that time. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, and so yes, that's when it was really taking off. Yeah. Doctor Hussein, can you can you tell me your experiences as a woman in this kind of field early on? There there really weren't a lot of women that were getting into the com computer sciences. Can can you tell me a little bit about what that was like? Yeah, you know, um, so I did my undergrad in India, and uh, and in India that for some reason I've quite not put my finger on it. The there isn't such a big. I mean, my graduating class was about fifty fifty. We were 50 oh, wow. percent men, fifty percent uh, women. Um, but I but there is a big di you know there is a big difference even now in in the conferences that I go to and and stuff. We are just about five or ten percent. Uh, women compared to the men and there are many meetings where it's highly um, not balanced um, so I, I basically take the opportunity as much as I can even when I'm teaching on campus or when I'm when I'm in meetings to sort out my fellow you know women in the field sure. and create sort of a collaboration just because <laughs> yeah, um, sure. uh, there are a few of us um, but I, 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 yeah, I, I haven't quite put my finger on why there is, I mean, there wasn't really that kind of um, difference while I was growing up in India. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you see a lot of current opportunities in the field? Uh, in computer science, yes. Yeah, yeah. Tremendous. Uh, I, you know, I'm of course biased, but I think it's just a great field to be mm -hmm. in. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of an ability to to flex your time uh, and work independently, um, and it and and what's tremendous is it's constantly changing. So mm -hmm. you really have to be a lifelong learner in order to keep up, because 
you'll have to learn a, at least one or two new languages throughout your career to program. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you have to constantly be at it. Are you pushing Maria into this field? I don't know how to do it, <laughs> but <laughs> if I could, I would, but um, uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping to instill a love for, of math, which I think is sort of critical uh, mm -hmm. and purely sort of understand it. And I think, mm -hmm. I think, I think you tend to go to, 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 you tend to move towards things that tend, are easier for you. Right. I mean, and I feel uh, if, if you can build good foundations in, in, in areas that, that become easier for you, then you naturally go towards them. As, as I frankly, I don't, you know, that seems to be the only way I feel I could steer somebody in any way, yeah. but there's no other way to, at least clearly to, in my head. <laughs> but uh -huh. I could. Well, I can give some inside information. Mario works very hard in math and has really excelled during this distance learning time too. And uh, she checks in with questions all the time and it's great. She, she like, she, she takes the stuff to learn it. She doesn't do it just to complete it. She does it because she wants to understand, which is all you can really ask of a student. And my wife, um, little inside thing here is, every time I have a class, she's like, oh, is that Maria's class? Because <laughs> she would hear Mar she'll hear Maria come in and ask the question. She's like, oh, Maria. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. But she's doing great. I hope her math, her love for math can can continue because she definitely she works so hard at it and does such a good job. Yeah, no, I think uh, it's math. I, you know, I I've been sort of trying to think of why I got into CS or why I love math or computer science for that uh, for the uh, for that reason. I realize in these kinds of areas, you have one correct answer. You could actually get the right answer and know when to stop. <laughs> well, if you were writing, you know, in English or in, like you could write the paper forever and it will never be over. Well, yeah. you know, you get, you get the right answer in the math problem and you, you know, you're, you're done. You, yeah. in, and a piece of code, you write your piece of code and it works and you know it works, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? You and so there it. is a very nice, that, that's a nice quality, you know, to, to the subject, to the area. Yeah. Dr. Hussein, you've been in this field for now, I'm not even going to ask, but for many years, right? For 20 years, we know of so far. Right. Um, where do you see it going? What, what's the next step? What's the 5G of CS? You know, it's, um, I think, I, I think, you know, just if you see how technology has taken over our lives, like even if you look, 20 years ago, we all didn't have cell phones or we didn't have these smart devices which we were carrying. Um, and now we can't imagine being uh, anywhere without a smartphone. Sure. Yeah. And I think that is that kind of uh, immersion of technology is now going to happen in our homes. So you're going to start having very smart homes, very smart cars. And, and this is just as it has transformed our lives in terms of how we went from having a stack of maps in our car, which we had to refer to, where now we just speak out an address and we know the direction, we get rerouted with traffic and all of that. That kind of transformation is gonna happen in our homes and uh, in our, in, in, you know, even more so in the way we travel from point A to point B. And I, think, uh, and I think all of that is enabled through algorithms in computer science. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically taking data, processing it, understanding how to navigate, how to reroute, how to, uh, to you know, just use that data intelligently uh, to do, do something more efficiently and optimize. And I think that's where really CS is headed. And so there's tremendous opportunity within it. I think it's critical skill for everybody to have. So um, let's go back. So you mentioned about how you liked math because you had one definitive answer, right? So when was the first time you can remember you were like, oh, maybe math or science or computer science, maybe this is, this is something I really enjoy. This is something I think I want to focus on. What's your, when do you first think you got interested in that? So I think I, 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 think I liked math uh, quite a bit throughout, but I very distinctly remember my physics, um, professor, my teacher in school, 
uh, right around eighth, ninth grade. And, mm. and I think the fact that I liked physics and, the, and I think she did a phenomenal job in sort of explaining how, how it is just so fundamental about your life. Like if you understand physics, you understand how the world works to a certain extent. And that sort of connection got me intrigued into the sciences um, uh, more so. And then I think that just built on, uh, built on top of each other. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about topics or anything you think are interesting that you wanted to share off your head? You know, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's computer science is, is a lot of fun. I mean, I think everybody should, should, um, make some time and in, in the ample spare time to, to, to toy with some programming, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a, um, and, and there are tons of visual programming tools or even, uh, online courses where you can uh, do some Python coding or Go mm -hmm. coding or things like that. But I think that's a skill that everybody should at least explore and develop and hone over time uh, because I think it would be invaluable to have because I think that's the direction we're going in mm -hmm. in the long run. Dr. Hussein, you are an expert in cybersecurity. Um, got any advice for me when I get on Gmail or something like that? What? Any advice? You know, I mean, I, I, I think keep up with all the updates. So whenever there's an update, whenever oh. there's an e-security update, Make sure your, your computer is secure. Um, and I think if you keep up with that uh, and then sort of ignore the phishing mails, like if somebody, something sounds fishy, it is fishy. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, if somebody's asking you to click on something and enter some information, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, follow that gut. And I think, and, and I think th those two things will keep you safe. Great. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe you could remove your social security number from your um, email signature at the bottom too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's funny you say that because when oh, that's I was not at good. Your... You, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. No, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When I was at USC, we used our social security number as our student IDs. Yeah. Me too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And 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 they were posted all over campus. Yeah. Yep, that's how you saw your grades, right? Exactly, that's how you saw your grades. Yep, I was there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, doctor, I, you know, uh, this has been wonderful. You know, you've really um, shown some of our students uh, the importance of computer science and how you can uh, find the love for it very young and continue on and be as successful as you have. Uh, so congratulations on all that you've accomplished. And... Uh, we really appreciate you taking this time to talk to us. Thank you so yeah. much for giving me an opportunity. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. And fight on. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I see there's a fellow Trojan there somewhere. I, I got my, I, that's where I got my doctorate was at USC. Oh, I, I didn't realize that. Oh. Sierra School of Education. Yep. Oh, so. very, very nice. Very yep. nice. And I, awesome. I think I got this, I think my mom got this for me and my commencement. That's ago, awesome. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I, 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 yes, that's, that's awesome. Campus is a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been such a pleasure. Um, thanks so much for joining us. And Dr. Hussein, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Nice job, Thank Dr. you for having me. I appreciate right. it. Thank you.